No, no I'm going to get in trouble. I, okay, no, I'm just going to say it. In my opinion... Hello. This is a bit up close and personal, isn't it? Joy. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. If you haven't been here before, hi, I'm Lena. I make loads of kinds of videos, but today is just going to be a Q&A because one, I actually don't think I've done a Q&A about me rather than like agony on like advice since... 2018 or, tw or early 2019 so i thought i'm gonna do it one because sometimes it's nice it's not like a tell-all kind of channel where i just reveal stuff about me but it's nice to know a little bit about who's behind all of the very incredibly random video essays and other random sh that i throw up on this channel and also because if you haven't heard i'm doing vlogmas so i'm going to be uploading a video every day from the 1st to the 24th of december <laughs> for my sins. It's gonna be really fun, but obviously it's taking a lot of time to pre-record those videos. And also if you're a Patreon, you won't pay any more money. You're just gonna pay the normal amount of money. I'm just gonna give you more stuff because it's Christmas and it's festive and I feel like it. But I'm pre-recording a lot of those videos so I can also have a little snooze over December. So things have been hectic <laughs> around here. And I thought I'd do something kind of, you know, just laid back, we have something cozy, grab a cup of tea or something and we're gonna get started. You sent me these questions over on Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you don't get to participate. <laughs> Them's the rules. <laughs> if you thought it was a democracy, I'm sorry to tell you, it's a dictatorship. <laughs> but thank you so much for sending in your questions. I've picked out some of them and I'm gonna try and get round to as many as possible, but there's lots. So maybe I'll do another one of these during Vlogmas, who can say? <clears throat> First of all, and I had this question a few times, so thank you for your concern. Somebody asked, how are you? Because I hope you are doing well. That's very lovely of you to ask. I'm actually doing probably the best I've ever done. I feel great. I think maybe that is, and I don't know if anybody else has experienced this, because I had so many low lows, during the pandemic maybe the contrast makes me feel like my life is now really great even though like I'm still not doing everything or I don't have the life I had before the pandemic back but maybe it's the contrast <laughs> of feeling like everything was falling apart and feeling really trapped that now I'm just feeling really good like genuinely part of that maybe has to do with the fact that my life has gone in a different track and that took a long time to like reconcile in my head but I feel like I'm getting there and everything's really exciting at the moment I'm putting together like the final draft of my poetry collection that's coming out next year which is like one of my like actual dreams and yeah loads of other exciting stuff is happening I just feel really contented this is the first year that I've like worked for myself and I'm somebody who apparently thrives alone <laughs> I'm not alone, but like I think I'm much more suit working on a smaller scale with a very few amount of people. I feel like I probably work more hours than I used to and I probably like work harder, but because I don't have like the oppressive <laughs> pressure of working for a big company, I actually feel way less stressed and I do find it harder when it gets darker and like I sometimes can get a bit miserable, but in general, nothing to complain about. Feeling creative, doing well. <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> this is a very important question. And I appreciate that you asked it. Last meal, <sighs> starters, main and dessert, you've stipulated, <laughs> which I appreciate as well. So starter, not really a starters kind of person. Like I've never, I probably had a starters, it's formal starters about five times in my life. But starters, I would probably have something buttery with mushrooms. Like they're, they're like my favorite things like truffle, <sighs> that would be good then for mains i'd have a very complex version of bangers and mash so like loads of different kinds of sausage and loads of different kinds of mash with loads of different kinds of gravy kind of like prefix bathroom <laughs> but for gravy there's a place in london that i used to love when i ate meat called mother mash so if you will forgive me that this is my last meal ever i may just eat meat for that meal <laughs> thank you and um it would be like all the incredible different kinds of herbs and, and weird sausages that they serve at that place because oh. and then for dessert sticky toffee pudding with custard and a side of lint balls which sounds like something you'd put in your cupboard to keep the moths away but i mean these kind of lint balls <laughs> and important a very large glass of port yeah i think i'm happy with that what is one bit of advice you wish someone had told you before you turned 30 this is something that nobody could have known and only me traveling back in time could have really said but I wish I could have been like shaken me and been like all of your heroes 
created all of their best work in their 40s and 50s. Not that that's not for everybody, like loads of people's heroes peak really early or like have gotten famous in, when they're like 19. But personally, my heroes mainly like wrote stuff in later life. And that's true of like loads of artists. Toni Morrison had like this whole career on the side of being a editor and then became like more and more prolific as she got older. Jacqueline Wilson didn't start writing books till she was in her 40s, which is like a fact I like to repeat to people. <laughs> like Amanda Palmer only really came into herself and like kind of started, I think, write, writing her best stuff like later. And she wrote the book that I love, The Art of Asking, later. And this idea of like young people thriving, one is just like a bit wild considering that we're not all born in the same bodies with the same brains and the same financial and spiritual circumstances but also just logistically gives you a really small window of time in which to learn enough stuff to make stuff that's meaningful for other people so that's what i'd tell myself if i went back i'd be like nobody you personally admire succeeded in their 20s so why would you be sad you haven't done like everything you've ever wanted to in your 20s. It doesn't make any sense. Make it make sense, Mini Lena. Make it make sense. Do you have a skincare routine? You'd be excited to hear, I've been watching this channel for a while, that I now do. I know. I'll link them below because I don't want to go on it, but this isn't a skincare channel and who knows if this is right or wrong. But just honestly, here's what I use. I use this cleanser and stuff to take off my makeup and wash my face. I use this toner. Sometimes I put this on, although who knows if it's actually going to prevent my eventual <laughs> decay and death. Probably not. This moisturiser and like occasionally, if my face is lucky, this eye cream. Somebody asked what my Enneagram number is and whether it's accurate, like how accurate it is for me. And um, just want to publicly say i don't even want to say i'm neutral about horoscopes like i genuinely like i'm minus numbers confident that they are in any way helpful <laughs> Or real <laughs> and the same with like a lot of other kind of personality type stuff and like whatever but Enneagram so weird my friend Tessa as in Tessa Violet like got me into it and I was a bit like oh these bloody Americans coming over with all their ideas trying to tell us who we are but like she was really spot on I found my Enneagram number and uh it's terrifyingly accurate the more you look at it so it's interesting I did listen to like a whole podcast series on Enneagrams and I still don't really know how I feel about it but I'm a number seven. Seven. And here is what it says. Sevens are extroverted, optimistic, versatile, and spontaneous, playful and high-spirited and practical. They can also misapply their many talents, becoming overextended, scattered, and undisciplined. They constantly seek new and exciting experiences, but can become distracted and exhausted by staying on the go. They typically have problems with impatience and impulsiveness. At their best, they focus their talents on worthwhile goals, becoming appreciative, joyous, and satisfied basic fear of being deprived or in pain <laughs> or hungry that's my addition basic desire to be satisfied and content to have their needs fulfilled that is harrowingly accurate so thanks enneagram this is an interesting one at what point did you start reacting positively to friends announcing that they're pregnant <laughs> Like I've said in other videos, my like childhood best friend got pregnant when we were 15 and she had the baby and now she has like four. And like some of my friends are trying at the moment or like Hannah, she's become pregnant. Very, very exciting. Can't wait to read to that little critter. People in my life have been having babies like throughout my whole life. And I, I think also like coming from a Christian background, loads of people in my circles that I knew got married at like 19, 20, 21. <laughs> and then like, you know, got on with it, cracked on. So that's never been like that weird for me, but I do still all, always ask if somebody pulls me into a toilet and is like, I'm pregnant. I always am like, is this good news? <laughs> And they say, they usually say yes. Sometimes they say no. And then I'm like, let's talk about your options. I don't think you should ever stop asking people or checking in with them if it's appropriate and if you're close enough to them. It should never automatically be happy or sad news unless they obviously tell it to you in a way that is like so explicitly happy, you know? But I get what you mean. And I think like, obviously as you get older, it's less likely to have been unintentional and also less likely to be a financial disaster but that always depends and i think that's something that we should never assume have you ever traveled to the us where uh yeah i've gone a lot i lived in reno for like four months i've been to new york a couple of times which controversial opinion it's fine <laughs> it's like if you if 
No, no I'm going to get in trouble. I, okay, no, I'm just going to say it. In my opinion, it's the poor man's London. Like, if you if you don't know London very well, then, like, New York is exciting. But, like, anyway, <laughs> sorry to everybody, but I don't... Wow. I've been to, like, West Virginia, Alabama, St. Louis, Salem, Oregon, Portland, Santa Cruz. I've, I've been really lucky, to be honest. And I think, like, probably, like, unless I need to be in the US for some reason, like, I'd probably go and explore other parts <laughs> of the Americas because I've probably, like, over traveled in america it's really fun i think to be honest i think the best place i really liked west virginia and portland like i much preferred portland to seattle and i had such a magic time there so they're probably my two favorite places to go although parts of washington were really cool i went to washington and i got to go to the library of congress and that was really exciting i have a video about that down in the description if you want to watch but um yeah yes i have been to the us and it was great what music are you listening to right now i'm gonna leave some of my i make a playlist every month of like what i'm listening to and i'm pretty sure it's public i mean there's not secret so i can leave the links below if you want but i have really been enjoying my self-made playlist <laughs> musicals to jog to where i just jog to musicals and i'm particularly really enjoying the soundtrack to company at the moment um it's just giving me life so that's what i'm listening to uh, related to that do you enjoy theater plays um ofs i kind of wrote some down for me that i just that, that just popped out in my head that i like immediately remembered and was like wow so angels in america i saw at the national theater with all of the star-studded cast and genuinely thought it was bloody incredible like bloody incredible small island again at the national that was so freaking good i saw kenneth branner in the entertainer once and that is a play that i didn't really know that much about even though it's really famous and he was just like so incredible in it and a massive kenneth branner fan of old much to do about nothing kind of kenneth branner era so that was really cool and also he's really good at tap dancing so random but okay <laughs> come from away is probably one of my favorite musicals to see live ever it's so good and very evangelical about that show even though it has like a really weird name and a weird concept so it's hard to get people in like bums on seats but once people see it they understand that it's one of the best musicals of all time and then i also the last musical i saw before lockdown was amelie the musical and that could have gone either way but i was relieved to um, realize that it was actually like life-changing so good so well staged so clever oh my god what style of mustache would you like if you had to keep it forever an easy question so thank you for asking Hand handlebar i think i'd really be able to pull off a handlebar it would help me like think a lot i'd be able to stroke it i th i definitely have like a kind of handlebar one and i do like a lot of nautical outfits to go with it it would be it would be great in fact maybe i will i have got pcos so maybe i could <laughs> favorite books uh, i actually have a list of my favorite books like free to download if you and then you can like tick them off and print it out if you sign up to my newsletter so i'll leave that in the description if you are interested in my top 20 favorite books what is your favorite christmas food um personally i care about volume <laughs> over category so i just like eating a lot of christmas but i would say the gravy the gravy on the spiritual level connects to me yeah it's always the gravy this is a good question you are such an intelligent lady thank you although you haven't seen me in my sillier moments but i'm glad that the, the parts of my life where I do come across as intelligent are recorded. What is your formal or informal education? And then I was like, I've just written down, I love the idea of informal education. So like the fact that you don't get all of your education from formal education. So my formal education is, I went to just like a normal comp in comprehensive. That means just a secondary school and primary school in a city, Coventry, <laughs> which it was, but anyway. I did, I went to uni. I went to Aberystwyth in Wales to do my undergrad. I did like, a master's at Warwick University and that's all the formal education I've done which is decent that's cool uh some of it taught me stuff some of it didn't informally you know probably a lot of the like education that I've got has been from like my adult non-fiction reading I think some of that's really like broken my brain open and I have like a lot of authors to thank for that but like in a more real world sense I guess like I think I got a lot of education from my parents having a really wide circle of of friends and people moving through the house so like growing up I'd like play with kids from Hong Kong. We'd have people from Brazil or Zimbabwe um, kind of coming, like staying in the house and, and moving through it. And my godparents were all from different countries like France and Sweden. I was lucky to live in a bit of a multicultural city. So like a lot of my friends had different religions and ethnicities to me. I, I think that like counts as like some kind of like education, if not in like actually teaching me like in detail about everybody else's experiences, at least knowing from a young age that people had loads of different experiences experiences and that things didn't have to be the way they were in my country and that 
the way people understood the role of like religion and politics was different and different and nothing you should take nothing as read basically so I consider that like a big part of my education and I think also like I was really lucky to work in non-fiction publishing at the beginning of my career so I got to meet a lot of like either experts in their fields like people who are writing not non-fiction books about like things that they had genuinely studied for years or decades and also a lot of people who were writing memoirs anyone from like I was doing the publicity for Nancy Tucker who was 19 and written a memoir about her eating disorder to Harry Leslie Smith who was like 90 three or 94 at the time writing about his experience growing up in complete poverty in Britain like before the war and going through the war and stuff so I think also like that was really helpful for me like forming my idea of like different parts of the world was like getting to work with all those different kinds of people I know that a lot of the time when people work in publishing they usually go to fiction but I was really lucky in that I spent quite a lot of a few years at a non-fiction publisher that exclusively only published non-fiction and I look back at that and think like oh actually that was really useful for my brain is there anything you miss about living in London will you ever return so yeah obviously so for, for context I moved out of London during the pandemic because like our circumstances changed and it was just better for us to leave and at first we thought it would be a in permanent leave and it's turned into like probably what is a permanent leave and I'm sad about it in a lot of ways but I think also you have to get more out of London than you put in I think and a lot through most of my 20s I got more back from the experience of living in London than I than I put in but towards the end I really felt like I was putting in more financially <laughs> the amount of energy I had like I was putting a lot of that into the experience of living in London and all of the extra emotional <laughs> costs of living in London than I was utilizing and, and getting out and also this phrase kept going around in my head that I know I talk about her a lot on the channel but Hannah Louise Poston one of my favorite youtubers said she talks about knowing your proximity to luxury knowing your proximity to wealth and it just dawned on me before the pandemic but also during the pandemic that I wouldn't be able to build like a stable long-term life for myself with a garden and like outdoor space in London that was just something that is probably never going to be possible for me and that's fine that's fine so I moved back to where I'm from the Midlands and it's been really brill and it's you know in context of the rest of the world still pretty close to London yeah I think the thing I miss obviously most about London is the people I do think more of my friends will probably scatter about the UK as we get a bit older and so many of them are already scattered anyway and I also have some really great friends in the Midlands so it's you know it's not a sob story but obviously there, there are people that I really really miss in London and I miss the spontane spont spontaneousness of being able to just hop on a tube and see them but I think like as with a lot of people like I've realised during the pandemic you really have to strip down what you think is important and where you think your life is going and I definitely like things will never be the same after the pandemic and I definitely probably wouldn't have left London for at least another five years or maybe ever if we hadn't had the pandemic so it's been a really interesting like recalibrating experience for me but generally a really positive one <laughs> whenever I feel sad about it I'm just like tell myself London is there London is still there. You can go visit. You're going to have more money to go and visit now that you're not paying that kind of rent. And I think there's also some ego there attached to like people wanting to stay in London because they want to feel like they're in the middle of everything when actually like that's a lot more nuanced and there's loads of different ways to be in the middle of everything. And just because you live in a certain city doesn't mean that you are like in the epicenter of what is going on in the world. Oh, and lastly, most asked question, what explain Frog Snog out. So for those of you who haven't been around, forever I mean that's fine why would you have been but I've had this channel for like 11 years <laughs> it used to be called just kiss my frog sure so when I used to end the videos I used to, it started off as like a sarcastic joke because I didn't know how to end the videos I just said frog snog out because it's just kiss my frog and it, that's just continued and um, I'm very stubborn so I still do it even though it doesn't make sense to anyone I find it comforting perhaps some of you find it comforting but Maybe it's a lesson in the fact that not everything has to make sense in this world. Some traditions that are harmless are fun. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video. It's a bit of a random one, but um, I really hope you're excited about Vlogmas. Turn your notifications, your little bell notifications on so that you don't have to remember that I'm doing it. Your phone will just tell you, which is much more practical than having to remember what's going on with anything in life. Here are some more videos you might enjoy. Thank you so much to the Gumption Club for making these videos possible. Uh, and I'll see you in the... When will I? I see you and I'll see you in the next one frog snog out